What's going on guys? Welcome to a special Stock Watch Sunday. My name is Brad Smith and uh, welcome to Own the Chaos. Uh, and uh, for those of you who are joining me for the first time, I'm a stock trader uh, that trades over-the-counter stocks uh, specifically and I share with other individuals on this channel as well as in our group that is we trade HQ on how to find success in trading this very volatile market so welcome and welcome to those who have been following me all this time uh, for you uh, again I can't see it too well because it's so cloudy outside but this is uh, outside the uh, Homer spit so we are in Homer Alaska I am on vacation and uh, it's just been an awesome experience. Alaska was one of my uh, like bucket list types of destinations, and it's been pretty awesome. What trading has been uh, has has been for me, and how it's blessed me in a lot of ways. And one of those is just to be able to uh, do things such as this and just cross things off that bucket list. And it's been awesome. I uh, hiked along a glacier yesterday, went fishing for halibut and and salmon, and it's just been awesome. And I got another week and a half to go uh, it's been really a great experience and if you guys ever get a chance to come out this way i highly encourage you to do that homer is great it's home to jewel if you go guys know who jewel is as well as uh a tv show alaska the last frontier um the the folks that are from that show are literally like uh you know a, a mile or two down the road from here it's pretty cool but homer itself has been a pretty awesome uh, place. It's a really tiny town, and then you can see what's called. It's called Homer Spit. It's a uh, tiny piece of land uh, that you can't see it too well. And it really drives me crazy that you can't see it because of the lighting. But um, I might try to see if I can show it to you. But it's really just a, a small strip of land that's just way out there in the uh, uh, the bay there, and it, which leads out to the Bering Sea. So it's really cool, tiny little fishing town. They have a couple shops here and there. Um, it's a place called the Salty Dog Tavern, which I'm planning on visiting as well before I, I head out. Uh, it's a really cool experience. So let me just kind of welcome some people here. Um, uh, Sharon, Alan, Daniel. Hey, man, I lived in Alaska. Yeah, yeah I, I, I don't know if I could live here all year round, but summer is definitely a, a place to come. Um, what part of Alaska? Yeah, so I just uh, went ahead and told you that. Awesome fishing is amazing. Yeah, it, it really is amazing. Uh, jealous of the weather yeah it's been um, uh, it's been what, like 70s ish and you know a couple a little bit of breezy here and there today's like the, the worst day so far since I've been here it's a little rainy um, it's like in the 50s <laughs> but uh, it's kind of weird uh, to be like that in the middle of July but uh, it's uh, much nicer I guess than back home in Maryland where it was like 98 degrees and 100% uh, humidity, which is pretty miserable here. At least it's, you know, it's a little bit cool, but I'd much rather be a little bit cool than, you know, sweating my, my tail off. So, uh, yeah, great fishing in Alaska, Jason. Yeah, absolutely. It's been quite an experience. Uh, I'm in 108 degrees. Yeah, I uh, feel sorry for you, buddy. Um, Sharon asked, staying at Land's End. No, I'm actually not on the spit. Um, I am a little bit off of the spit, and so, um, I'm actually overviewing it. So behind me, the spit's actually there, but uh, you can't see it because of the clouds and everything. Um, but you can see nothing but just the spit itself, and then you can see all of um, there's a huge mountain range, and then you know to to my left uh, is um, I guess I should point over there. So to my left is uh, of like four volcanoes, uh, and they're all active, which is pretty cool. Over this way. Um, was a glacier that I went and hiked and it was just it's pretty awesome experience uh, Alaska is an amazing place if you've never been I highly encourage you to come it's uh, it's awesome so um, let's see here yes yeah, so somebody was asking about my discord group so let me get back to I know I've covered uh, my vacation destination now so let's get back to the task at hand don't want to get too off topic but so Stockwatch Sunday what's Stockwatch Sunday it's part of a segment that I have within my channel that where we talk about uh, stocks that we're going to be watching for the week. Uh, and I'll go down and break down a few of those that I'm watching just to kind of see where we're headed, uh, you know, in the beginning of the week. And obviously things change because such is life in the OTC. And this is why we call it under the chaos because it is a chaotic environment in the over-the-counter stocks. Um, but uh, break down a couple of stocks just to explain to you why I'm watching them and how I see value. Of course, it's not something that I would suggest uh, you purchasing a stock just because I am, you know, talking about it. 
obviously do your own due diligence, make your, form your own opinion, form your own plan and stick to that plan and don't deviate that plan just because somebody else tells you to or, or you think that somebody else knows better than you. If you're not understanding something, then take a step back and don't trade it until you fully understand and you're confident in making that trade. And if you're just starting out trading, I would highly suggest you do uh, some sort of paper trading. There's plenty of uh, platforms out there that allow you to just basically trade with fake money so that you can get yourself familiar with trading and how it all works and make those mistakes there instead of risking your own money um, by just diving in. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and um, go over uh, our, our community. So we are We Trade HQ. It's not just Own the Chaos here. Obviously, this is my channel, but we have a community of over 2,000 members called We Trade HQ, and we also have a platform. It's called WeTradeHQ.com, where we uh, welcome all types of traders from all different types of backgrounds, where whether it's cryptocurrency, whether you're trading Forex, options, it doesn't matter. Come to WeTradeHQ.com and learn and grow together with uh, like-minded individuals of over 2,000 people. The links are in the description below. I encourage you to check that out as well as they do have a online course uh, that is own the chaos course if you're looking to uh, step up your game in the world of OTC and understand how I find success within this group within this uh, chaotic um, part of the market then uh, I'd suggest you to check that out you know I'm not here to be that cheesy salesman type to just uh, do nothing but sell my course on my channel that's not what this is for but it is available to you if you're interested in checking that out and wanting to learn and grow a little bit more and maybe kind of accelerate that learning curve um, when it comes to trading uh, especially within this market so check that out if you're interested uh, it's pretty affordable and invest in yourself I think you know uh, and um, you know, of course, you're not obligated to do anything, you know, buy it or whatever. You can take advantage of all the free stuff that we have on WeTradeHQ.com. The entire platform is completely and 100% free. Only thing that you pay for is like those courses or mentorships or whatever else, which I might add that our mentorships are pretty awesome. We have uh, almost 100 people within our mentorships right now, and people are really enjoying that and getting a lot out of that uh, for their money. So uh, with that, so the stocks that we're going to be watching this week, uh, that I'm going to be watching this week is FRFS, IMTV, and HIPH. Uh, so I'll go ahead and write those down. It's FRFS, IMTV, HIPH. And I'll go ahead and break those down as to why uh, I am watching those uh, this week. So as well, if you guys are familiar with this channel, go ahead and ask any questions you uh, would like to ask within the chat here, and I'll be happy to answer those for you. Um, towards the end of the video. So go ahead and put them in the description or the, uh, the chat over here and I'd be happy to get to those after I break down the stocks I'm watching and why I see value in them. Okay. Um, let me share my screen with you here as per usual. All right, so FRFS. Let's go ahead and touch on this one first. Uh, so FRFS is one that we've been watching for a while, as you guys might know. So um, this is something that uh, I actually just kind of uh, borrowed off of one of our members in our group. Uh, and um, they had uh, sent a message over to InvestorSub. It's another platform that a lot of people use. And so why they changed the name on InvestorSub to uh, GIFA, which is G-I-F-A. And so they got a response from InvestorSub and said that we make changes such as that as the actions that are approved and published by FINRA. So this could be a really big deal for FRFS as far as the name change and uh, merger that's going on with FRFS. Another good indicator that FRFS is finally making this change is if you go to CNBC.com, uh, which obviously we know is a pretty legitimate platform. Uh, it has now been changed to GIFA, which I think is a really big deal in my opinion, and that could cause a lot of buying here when people actually start to see that this merger is actually happening and that there's a name change that's going to be taking place within the stock and that's no longer going to be Firefish. Guys, this is one that I've been uh, kind of uh, preaching to you. I don't want to say preaching, but you know, just kind of bringing to your attention steadily and consistently over the last several months about how this was going to be happening and that uh, the um, name change and the takeover of this company was going to happen and it looks like it's finally going to do that so I would expect to see some sort of PR oops some sort of PR within uh, this week and if you aren't familiar with uh, our uh, platform here it is it's wetradehq.com where you can connect with like-minded individuals and kind of consult with them on what they're finding as far as due diligence goes and you can obviously check 
out uh, the chart here for um, you know your own due diligence and technical analysis you know we see here how FRFS has been trading um, you know it's been trading around in the six and seven cent range and it's actually had highs of about 16 cents once this goes through and this PR goes through I personally think that this could be a great transition and a great catalyst for FRFS um, as you can see here I like BB stock put it in here on we trade HQ that their exchanges are starting to show FRFS as GIFA waiting to see it on a daily list daily list and that will confirm it so that's what I'm thinking will also happen this week uh, as far as FRFS is concerned we already know the share structure is tiny we already know uh, look the floats around 160 million that's really not that big as far as the OTCs is concerned and so I think if this PR comes out this week it could be a really nice runner for all of those that are in it and maybe those looking maybe to potentially take a position here at this level I mean even if it goes even if if it returns to its former highs uh, I see uh, a nice little double here if you decide to get into it uh, in this eight cent range all right so the next one is IMTV so IMTV is imagination TV that's one that I've uh, had my eye on now for the last week or so so we'll go ahead and pull that up IMTV they have a um, music festival coming up and then you know if whether you're into hip-hop or, or or not there's a lot of good due diligence on IMTV as you can see here a lot of people have shared this already uh, and I am uh, my thoughts and opinions align with some of the folks that are in here so they've done a lot of things they've paid off uh, some debt and they changed their venue uh, and I've backed up this due diligence so I don't want you to think that I'm just going off of somebody else's opinion but you can go ahead and click on these links and verify them for yourself um, but uh, this guy Mash Tater has been a pretty solid uh, trader within our group and has provided a lot of influence or, or a lot of insight and uh, does, does a lot of really good work as far as due diligence is concerned and um, you know Obviously, this is a news release on uh, paying off that debt, which we all know is a very high, um, a very good um, a catalyst for a stock. Anytime they're, they're looking to pay off any more debt, it's always a good thing. And they changed their venue. And why does that? What is that? Why does that matter? So they uh, moved their venue for this um, music festival because they wanted to be. They realized that the amount of sales that were coming in, they were going to sell out very quickly. So if they decide to move it to a different or bigger, larger venue, that means more revenue and uh, more potential for a higher valuation of the company. So what does that mean for us? It's trading at you know double zero two one at, at the close on Friday, and I think that's way undervalued in my opinion, based off of everything that they have going on. They're paying off debt, and they have a lot of um, pretty big names that are going to be showing up at this music festival too. Um, Juice World, we guys. We know that there are, he's already at the top 10 uh, on uh, billboard charts. You can look at that yourself. I think that's one going to be one of the bigger names, uh, six nine as well. In my opinion, this could be a huge deal for IMTV and for it to be trading at double zero two one. In my opinion, I think that is just way too small. The concerts on July 28th, I foresee a run going all the way up to that date and maybe beyond that once they release. Uh, what kind of revenue they've been able to um, see and uh, we'll just you know watch uh, from there this is one that I told you guys uh, that I uh, observed a nice solid bottom in the double zero one seven and I actually got in around double zero one eight and have been kind of just sitting in this one a little bit uh, longer for those of you who know how my what my style of trading is I'm not a day trader I'm a swing trader so I'll get into a position and uh, because I see uh, potential for future catalysts on this you know based off a of share structure and everything else so I actually got in uh, right around uh, this time period double zero one eight and just kind of been riding it out waiting for that that nice little run um, b based off of these catalysts that I'm seeing so IMTV is one that I think is another one to watch out for and this might be a little bit of a dark horse for the next one but it's HIPH and it seems to have been getting uh, quite a bit of attention here I think and I'll go ahead and pull that up for you. It looks like I think there's only one comment on here, but that's okay. Uh, they had uh, news that had come out, and uh, I'll go ahead. I already had this pulled up here for you. So HIPH already had news come out that they uh, announced its uh, fashion coinex, and I know how people feel about their block blockchain and cryptocurrency as of recent, but I think this is going to be a good thing for 
American Premium Water. In my opinion, the reason why I think that it's a good uh, move is because A, they've been following through on a lot of their stuff as far as what they were setting, going to be set out to doing. And um, if you are not familiar with this resource, this is otcmarkets.com. I uh, utilize otcmarkets.com quite a bit to find out security details and how their share structure is combined or, and also to verify press releases, uh, news that comes out or whatever. If it's legitimate, it will always be showing up here. And if you go to this, that, it'll show you the same uh, type of news that was released on uh, Yahoo Finance. And uh, sorry for the wind, it's crazy windy here. If you guys can hear that over my microphone, I do apologize. Um, but so this is the one thing why I like HIPH. So they've been really consistent on coming out with PR and their security details is what I am most attracted towards. And this is why. So we have authorized shares at 200 million, which is very low. And the market cap is at one and a half. Outstanding shares is 93. Now, I don't think this float is as small as it says it is, but I still think that it's very, very tiny. Look, the last time that this float was re, uh, reported was back in uh, 2017, almost a year ago. But I think, in my opinion, that even though this uh, looks very small, I don't think it's changed a whole lot. I think it's a little bit larger than this. I think that some of these uh, shares have been uh, put into uh, you know, the outstanding a little bit more. And I think that even though that the, the float might be a little bit larger. I think that it's going to be still a very tiny float and any kind of um, serious catalyst that comes out on this could send this one um, to, uh, you know, at least at least double your position if you get into it at the price that it's in, at now, which is 017 in my opinion. Now, I'm not saying that, again, that just as one should be bought and this is why I was saying that it's kind of one of those dark horses, but they've been pretty active. If you look at the news that's been coming out on them, I'll go back to that for you. Um, so we'll, we have one at 6.5, 6.12, 6.7, 6.5. So like they've been coming out, everything that they've been saying that they were going to do up to this point, they have done, uh, especially with the uh, Fashion Coin ex Exchange. It is live as they uh, said they were going to do. And there, this is the other thing, like blockchain technology is still one of those uh, things that people don't understand, but it's very uh, secure and safe type of technology that's different than cryptocurrency and now I know a lot of people like to associate it directly with cryptocurrency but it's a little bit different doesn't um, you know mean that they're 100% wrapped up in the crypto or you know that they, they're that's the direction they're going because I know a lot of people it scares them off based off of everything that's been going on with it, uh, just cryptocurrency in general but I think this could be a good thing for HIPH especially based off of the share structure they have any kind of tiny little uh, catalyst that comes out on them this week uh, could be um, you know a great runner for those that are in this one so there you have it that's my three stocks to watch for um, this week now I, again I'm not going to uh, you know tell you that these are stocks that you need to get into or you um, should buy these or, or not pay attention to these just because I'm saying that you should or shouldn't uh, obviously do your own uh, due diligence and um, your own work and don't trade something based off of what I'm telling you or what anybody else is telling you. Do the work, be confident in your trades and uh, you will be just fine. You know, don't don't just um, piggyback off of anybody else. And I think it's one of those things, you know, like don't, um, if, if people should tell you when you're a kid, right? You know, if you're cheating on a test, you're only hurting yourself. And it's the same type of, uh, thinking or mentality when it comes to trading anything, not just over-the-counter stocks, but any style of trading. If you are, you know, basing all of your decisions on somebody else because you're copying exactly what they're doing, you're not helping yourself. You're only hurting yourself because you're not learning anything. You're not learning how to do this on your own because that individual or whatever might not be around the next time you're looking to make a decision or maybe you need to make a decision on whatever trading um, situation that you're in. So always do your own work. Always make trades based off of your own due diligence and your own um, plan that you, you're sticking to and don't base that off of anybody else's. And that includes me. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm the best trader that there is out there. I am far from that. But 
what I've been able to find out is that I'm pretty good at being able to teach people things. And I, I, I've discovered and people have also let me know that I'm very good at, you know, kind of like breaking things down and simplifying them. And so that's kind of like where I found my strength. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm, I'm making millions of dollars uh, a year on trading or anything like that, but it has afforded me to be able to do nice things just like, you know, what you see behind me or what you can sort of see behind me uh, and, you know, be able to focus all my attention on helping others and changing lives just like I, I am with you guys. And so that's why I'm not going to sit here and be some cheesy salesman and sell you all kinds of stuff. But I really just want to let you know about the um, community that we do have is just such a strong community and we're growing so fast. We have, you know, over 2000 members within We Trade HQ uh, in just under two months, which I think is a fantastic, um, you know, growth in my opinion and it's only uh, it's almost growing too fast for us we're, we're really trying to catch up uh, to a lot that's been going on but we are determined to uh, make sure that we give you the best quality experience within we trade hq that we can and i think we're uh, doing that and exceeding uh, your guys' expectations which is uh, pretty amazing and we're gonna we want to continue to do that every day so uh, always keep us in check and we'll uh, definitely make sure that we give you the best content and the best experience within we trade hq so Towards the end of the video, as I always like to say that I like we'll go over some questions for you guys and just kind of um, maybe clarify anything that I went over or answer any kind of over-the-counter stock questions for you. And I'll go ahead and do that now. So I'm just going to scroll through here uh, to see if there's any questions. Um, so Jason uh, donated to my channel. Appreciate that, buddy. Always like to shout those folks out that provides any kind of support to me and my channel and the, our community. So I do appreciate that, buddy. Thanks, thanks for that. Always consistently on here and providing support. So I, thank you so much for that. Uh, what's the best screener for OTC? So uh, Tofik asks us. So uh, in my opinion, the best uh, scanner for over-the-counter stocks is Equity Feed. And you go to EquityFeed.com. You download that software. It's a, a monthly subscription, and it is a little pricey. I will say that. But in my opinion, I think it pays for itself every month. Uh, and really day in and day out, I use uh, equity feed and it costs around $130 a month, which I know might be a little bit steep if you're just getting into this game. But, uh, you know, we do offer a community of people who do have equity feed that you might be able to, you know, grab some insight from uh, if they're using that. Uh, but I encourage you to think about getting into uh, equity feed uh, as soon as you possibly can. You know, obviously, I don't want you to be strapping yourself just to get that scanner. But once you get yourself comfortable with this style of trading and um, want to uh, step up your game a notch, I would encourage you to get equityfeed.com. And you could also get a 10% off um, your subscription by just using referral code Brad Smith, which is my name, uh, and uh, you will get 10% off. They don't sponsor me in any way or they don't pay me to say that. It's just a simple referral code. Uh, but that that is also the link for that is in the description as well. If you want to go ahead and sign up for equityfeed.com, that is down there. Um, all right, so what do you think of B-Box? They just want a court case. Uh, yeah, I saw that. We'll go ahead and look into that. I'm not sure if that's an OTC or not. Actually, I just, because I've been on vacation, I haven't had a whole lot, lot of time to focus on too much, but I'll go ahead and check that out for you guys. Um, okay. All right, IMTV to jump again. Yeah, so I think IMTV, nice view behind you. Yeah, appreciate that, buddy. So NNSR, I'll go ahead and look at that as well for you. Is um, is it safe to swing OTC? So I swing OTCs all the time. That's the only type of trading that I do. So swing trading OTCs is just my game. That's how I um, you know, find success. And so yes, I'm going to tell you that um, uh, swinging OTCs is gonna be safe in my opinion, but if it's not, up to what your risk tolerance is, and I'm not going to tell you to do that. So it's whatever your risk tolerance is, and if you're not comfortable holding something like that overnight, then don't do that. You know, it's 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 whatever it is that you're comfortable doing. I'm not going to uh, suggest that you do something that you're not okay with doing. So uh, I swing them all the time, consistently. I find success in doing that. Some people don't. Some people like to just day trade them, and that because that's how they find success, and that's how they manage the risk, and that's completely okay. Uh, but that is just my own um, take on it. So, all right, let's go ahead and check out what was the first one? B box. So, let me go ahead and share my screen again. 
with you here. So again, well, I'll look it up. I'll start. This is how I start. So B box. I'm gonna go on OTC markets. I think this is a Nasdaq stock, if I'm not mistaken. Right? Yeah, it's a Nasdaq stock. Now I'm not gonna go into too much inf detail on this one, only because it is Nasdaq. It's a much higher price than I'm looking at. But I already see here that it's jumped 113%. I can tell you right now that it's likely once you see something like this, especially in a Nasdaq run like that that um, yeah the OTC market is not going to give you a whole lot on that but when you see a huge run then I would certainly expect some sort of pullback on that so let's go ahead and just go to Yahoo Finance and see you said that there was news released on that so I'm going to go ahead and look that up for you just kind of see awarded 10 million that's huge um, so they were awarded $10 million for a data center project for a global social media giant. That's pretty awesome. Do we know what the media giant is? Let's see here. It just says social media giant. First award at most million square foot center beginning five to 10 years strategic with the social media giant. But it doesn't say what the social media giant is. So this could be interesting. It would be one I would probably suggest that you watch for uh, to see exactly who that partner is. Um, obviously, you know, if it's something like Facebook or Twitter, that's going to be a major, major catalyst for B box or black box, I should say. Uh, so yeah, I mean, watch for that. But because of the run that we saw on it on Friday with that major price increase, I would uh, suggest maybe if you're looking to make an entry on this and you're doing all your due diligence and you really want to get into the stock, watch to see what it does uh, pre-market and you know as the market opens because you don't want to get into something too high. Nine times out of ten, something like this is going to have some sort of pullback. So I would certainly watch out for that uh, if, if that does uh, that in particular. And what was the other one? NNRX or NNSX. Well, let's see. I just want to double check. Uh, see what it was NNSR okay so NNSR so I'll go back to we trade that one I know is an OTC if I'm not mistaken yeah nano sensors yeah I believe so I've seen the NNSR pop up on my scanners and I think there was a reason why I didn't choose to get in this I thought maybe it was share structure so while that's loading, we'll go back here and just kind of see what it's been doing on the chart. Whoa, look at this crazy sell-up. What in the world is that on TradingView? That's quite a red candle there. Um, let's see something. We'll go to the one-day chart, see what it looks like. So that was a crazy sell-off. Um, wow, that's kind of unbelievable. Um, let's go ahead and check the share structure on NNSR. This is one of the things I like to look at because if the share structure is too large, 950 million shares authorized, 939 outstanding, not too bad, um, floats not available. All this stuff is pretty late reporting. I think that's, as far as a transfer agent goes, that's not too shabby, um, but there's not much else going on here. Let's look at the news, what's been released on this lately. Announces closing a merger with Zebra. So it looks like this uh, catalyst has kind of already happened. So merger's already closed. I don't think that, unless there's some other major catalyst following this one, I'm not seeing how it's going to go uh, up anymore. Now, this is kind of a crazy pullback here uh, to drop, you know, double zero, three, two cents. Might be a good uh, flip play if you're looking to do something like that, like make a day trade with this uh, this sizable pullback might be a good uh, entry point let's see what I mean I don't know this is a weird odd looking candle in my opinion um, trying to identify some uh, a level of support here you could see there's some port the next level of support might be somewhere around I like this right here somewhere around the double zero six three is gonna be where it would get back up there to that support level after that it drops back down to I would say somewhere around double zero five two perhaps 
So if it drops back down to double zero five two, it might be a good entry point. Um, let's just look at the thirty minute or maybe the one hour. Let's look at the one hour. I don't understand that. That is insane. Yeah, it's looking like. Yeah, so I'm just looking for some confirmation on a nice solid support level. So it's looking like double zero five two, double zero five five might be somewhere around that eight uh, range. Uh, for NNSR so unless there's some other kind of catalyst that comes out on that one I'm really not that confident that we'll see any kind of major change with NNSR but I'd have to do a little bit more due diligence on that and just to kind of see where we're at as far as NNSR is concerned um, if you would like you can uh, direct message me in discord check the link down in the description for disc for a discord group if you're not part of that yet and uh, I will be more than happy to help you out on that on a personal level so um, Kami says AAGC shows yield sign in new section of OTC markets, but AAGC page, AAGC I think was a major uh, group play in my opinion. It looked like it was really good on the surface. It was another one of those plays where it just reminded me a lot of GRDO. The same CEO was involved with that where he stepped down, put another CEO in there, had you know a great little run, and then it just died out. I think AAGC mirrors that uh, kind of play in my opinion. So I actually got out of AAGC. I really don't want to focus on it too much more only because it's one of those things where I just, I don't, it's something that I really don't want to, I guess, encourage people to uh, take, look too hard at it only because it looks like it's run is over. If you're looking to make a long, long-term play and your risk tolerance is very high, then maybe just hang out in AAGC short. Let's see what it does. But for me, it was one of those things where I more than tripled my money on it, and I was happy with that. I decided to get out uh, right around the double zero three zero, and uh, up to this point, it looks like I made a very good decision in doing that. Stuck to my plan and wasn't going to deviate just because somebody else told me to. So AGC is one that I would think I would I would just be cautious about. That's all I would say about AGC. Um, okay, all right, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and just. Um, Stop there. I don't want to uh, you know, drag this, this out too much longer as far as the video is concerned. Uh, been going on for about a half hour now, so I'll just try to keep our Sunday, uh, you know, uh, Stockwatch Sunday videos somewhere around that, that time frame. So just want to recap here. Uh, so uh, again, don't base anybody else's, uh, base your trades based off of what anybody else does. Make sure you're always doing your homework. And you know, just because these are stocks that I'm watching doesn't necessarily mean they're stocks that you should be buying. You know, this is a, a watch list, not a buy list, not a sell list. It's just something for me to show you how I go about doing my own due diligence and how I find value in uh, particular stocks and how I see success. So hope that helped you guys out. If you are looking to, uh, you know, step up your uh, level of learning within the OTC markets and find out how I find success with uh, within these uh, in a much more detailed and organized manner, I highly suggest that you check out uh, the my only chaos mastery course which is on wetradehq.com check that out link is also in the description for that as well um, it's very affordable in my opinion and we have mentorships as well that provide daily uh, you know uh, guidance uh, for uh, this crazy game that we call the OTC so with that guys I hope that I uh, earned a subscription from you if you're not subscribed to my channel and um, you know, if you learned something today, I, I would appreciate it if you smash that like button to uh, support my channel a little bit more. And, um, you know, interested in checking us out, please uh, look at those links down in the description and um, see for yourself. We have a great community, uh, again, of over 2,000 members within We Treat HQ, and we are growing fast. And there's a reason for that. It's because we um, just, uh, you know, it's, it's it, we treat it like, like we're all family. Uh, anytime anybody needs help, someone's there and willing to help. Uh, that individual, whether it's me or anybody else within the group, uh, we really are just kind of like a tight knit group and uh, I really enjoy what we've got so far. So uh, again, with that guys, uh, from Homer, Alaska, uh, as always, I will see you all before the bell and B Smith is out. Take it easy guys.